NTT Docomo has been one of the driving forces behind the development of disaggregated radio access network technology. So I'm talking today to Sadayuki Abita. He's VP and General Manager of the Radio Access Network Development Department at NTT Docomo. So uh, Sadayuki, can you tell us what is NTT Docomo's view of Open RAN? Is it a viable option for commercial mobile networks? Yes, uh, Dogma has already deployed open network uh, from the beginning. So last year, we launched the 5G pre-commercial service with uh, open interface. That means uh, between the uh, CUDU and RU, we use the different vendors using the uh, open interface defined by Aura. And this year, we started uh, commercial uh, services and uh, we add uh, new more vendors uh, so in the same geographical area. In that sense, uh, we have already deployed open network. So uh, what are the main challenges in introducing open RAN technology into an existing network? We have already deployed a much vendor network in 4G. And uh, uh, so in that sense, we have experience, but uh, uh, especially in the beginning, um, when we try to so, uh, do the interoperability test between the multiple vendors, and uh, there are some issues, the both camps say that uh, I'm not wrong. They are wrong. So we need to ask that both of uh, them to the same questions. And uh, uh, fortunately, we have experience to the multiple vendor operation in uh, 4G. So we also see that uh, what happened in, in, in uh, seeing the specifications. So, and uh, we, we said that the uh, vendors uh, to uh, collect their uh, implementations. So from the beginning, that kind of so uh, issue has uh, often happened oftenly, but uh, now it's a speculation because mature. And uh, we, as, as mentioned, we have already had deployed the multi vendor network in commercial. So uh, I think now it's a uh, uh, problem, problem or issue becomes smaller and smaller. So uh, obviously all, all of this is maturing uh, and operators are, are finding out, um, you know, how to deploy such networks. But uh, when do you think that open RAN uh, architectures will be ready for urban sites that are managing large numbers of customers and, and very high volumes of traffic? Maybe first, um... I need to advise that the general mis misunderstanding the definition of the open run. So open run is not a VLAN. Open run is that the uh, uh, open interface between that uh, uh, different equipment. So we can choose the different vendors. Uh, for example, the, we use that the one vendor for RU and the different vendor, the other vendor used for the uh, DU side. And if we have the open interface and we have the uh, multi vendor operation, we can easily add the new vendors. Actually, we have already added new vendors uh, this year, and we just select the new vendors for remote head. So, so specification is mature, and once we, we introduce that uh, open interface, uh, we can uh, easily add uh, even the VLAN. So uh, we have already deployed that uh, our network in the metropolitan area in Tokyo. So uh, even uh, in Tokyo, we have already deployed open network. Okay, well, that's a very good uh, proof point for uh, open RAN architectures. So, so that's very good to hear and very encouraging for, for other operators. Uh, what can the open RAN community, the companies, developing uh, the, the different technologies that fit together in these multi-vendor environments, what can they bring to the telecoms operators that is different or new that, that maybe wasn't available before? The 4G era, the, uh, the single vendor provide all the equipment because that, uh, that is a closed interface. So 
only the big vendor which can support all the equipment is uh is only uh, work but the uh, open network so some case just uh, providing the remote head or du or software uh, we can introduce that vendor so we can avoid the vendor locking and we can easily introduce new vendor we uh that's uh can be reduced at the uh, supply chain risk and also uh, uh, expected the uh, cost reduction. And so the developments that are going on in the radio access network, this disaggregation, the introduction of open interfaces, uh, how does that fit into the broader picture, the broader evolution of telecoms infrastructures? Will, with other, will other parts of the telecoms network be subject to the, the same kind of disruption? Yes, uh, we are working on not only that the uh, RAM, but also the core network. And also uh, then, uh, and we already introduced a, a virtual EPC or virtual MPC in our uh, commercial network. And uh, uh, we are now uh, considering that uh, how we have, we, we will have the same platform, both uh, land side and the cost side, even uh, the uh, service side. And so also in, in general ecosystem telecom industry terms, do you think these developments will help to be a catalyst for, for greater and new innovation in the telecoms ecosystem? Uh, and are there new ways in which the industry, including the network operators, can support new startups and give them confidence in what they're doing and longevity in what they're doing? Yes, uh, we also have an interest to introduce a new uh, vendors. Uh, as mentioned that uh, once we introduce that uh, open interface, it is easy to add the new vendors. And how we can introduce that uh, startup? Of course, we need to maintain our quality uh, in our service. And uh, so, uh, we uh, consider to introduce a startup for for uh, small start, for example, the enterprise case, and uh, uh, it uh, it uh, so it is uh, the mature. Then we can expand it, uh, their coverage. Excellent. Well, um, very interesting developments going on in Japan, and it's great that you're helping to to bring this experience into the broader ecosystem and broader industry through the ORAN Alliance and other ways. Sadayuki, thanks very much for chatting with us today. Thank you very much.